This is block eight from topic nine on page 291, and you should have your process paper underneath your book. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we're look yesterday we learned a new vocabulary word. It was compound event. What was what did that mean? That was a compound word. What would a compound event be? Two events put together. Two or more events put together. Very good. So we're going to look at some compound events today and kind of like an easy way to see the outcomes of a compound event. So the first problem, number one, I have a jar. And in that jar, I have three marbles, a blue, yellow, and purple. And this is called a tree diagram. A tree diagram helps me see all the possible outcomes. So the first, if I picked up a marble out of the jar, the first outcomes that could happen, I could pick up what color marble? A blue. A blue. I could have picked up a yellow. I could have picked up a purple. There was three different marbles I could pick up. Well, the second selection, um, I need to pay attention to in this paragraph, it says, after the first try, you're replacing the marble. Well, if I picked up a yellow marble and did not put it back, do I still have three marbles in the container? Could I ever grab another yellow marble if I did not put it back? No. So a lot of times you have to pay attention to if they say you want to put the marble back or if you don't want to put the marble back. If I did not put it back, how many marbles would be in the container? Two. Two if I did not put it back. If I put it back, how many marbles would be in the container? Three. And that's how many... It stayed three. Okay, so we're going to list all the possible outcomes. I could have picked up a blue first, put it back, and then what else could I have picked up after a blue? Yellow. Another blue, another a uh, yellow, or a purple. If I picked up a yellow first, I could have picked up a blue. On the second try, I could have picked up a yellow on the second try. I could have picked up a purple on the second try. Okay, so we want to list all the possible outcomes. Um, so the first one, I could have picked up a blue and then a blue. I could have picked up a blue, then a yellow. I could have picked up a blue, then a what? Purple. Purple. Or if I picked up a yellow first, I could have picked up a yellow, then a blue. Or a yellow, then a yellow. yellow. Or a yellow, then a purple. purple. And I could have picked up a purple first. It could have been purple, then a blue. Purple, then a yellow. yellow. Or purple, then a purple. purple. So that gives me all possible outcomes that could, could have happened in this marble picking selection. So how many total possibilities could have happened with selecting two marbles? Any? How many total possibilities could happen? Just two things could happen? Nine. Nine. There's nine different outcomes that could happen. Okay? They wanted to know first picking a yellow, replacing it, and then picking a purple. How many of yellow first, then purple are listed? One. One. This guy right here. One out of a total of how many? Nine. So what is the probability of getting a yellow first, then a purple? One nine. One nine.
So the tree diagram kind of helps us see all the possible outcomes. So let's take a look at number two. It says complete the tree diagram for all possible outcomes of rolling a six-sided number cube and then tossing a coin. So a six-sided number cube. What is all the possible sides it could land on? One, 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 two, one two, three, four, five, and six. It's all the possible sides. No other sides it could land on. Well, if I rolled a number cube and it landed on one and then flipped a coin, what could happen with the coin? Land on heads. Land on heads, land on heads or it could land on land tails. On okay, well, if I rolled a number cube, it landed on two, what could my coin land on? Land heads tails. or tails. If I rolled a three and then flipped a coin, what could my coin land on? Heads or tails. Heads or tails. You got a chance. Quick question about a dice. Okay, whenever there's a dice, I guess you know how they have like a one side, one side has like one, and then one of the other sides will say that it has like six. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that side be heavier? Is it like one little cave in that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's it's a little cave in, oh, so it would be lighter if anything. But they make sure not to have it lighter. Good thinking though. Um, so four and then flip a coin, it could land on heads or tails. Five, then flip a coin, the coin could land on heads or tails. Then six, flip a coin, what could that land on? Heads or tails. Yep, then I have all my possible outcomes listed here, and they match up. How many total outcomes of this compound event could I have? Twelve. Twelve different outcomes. Two for each. Two for each number on the cube. All right, let's take a look at number three. Number three said uh, this person conducted an experiment already. And they wrote the results of the experiment in this table. How many times did they conduct the experiment? 20. 20. 20. How'd you know 20? Because there's, there's 20, 20 trials. There's 20 trials. Very good. So it says the table shows the results of the 20 trials. An experimental probability of each become, uh, outcome has been calculated using the data from each experiment. We need to... Um, look at the probability of all the different outcomes. So we're spinning a spinner first, then flipping a coin. So I know one thing that could happen is it lands on a red head, right? Is that one thing that can happen? Yes, ma'am. How many are, well, first, am I looking at experimental probability or theoretical? Why am I looking at experimental? Because you already did it. How did the trials? The experiment happened. I'm looking at the data from the experiment. Okay? So the experiment happened, and how many times total did they conduct the experiment? 20. 20. So that's my denominator. Okay? I need to see how many times a red head was picked. How many times do you see? Five. 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 That's one outcome that could happen. What's something else that could happen? It could land yellow on yellow tails. tails. Yellow tails. So let's look at that. How many total outcomes? 20. 20. 
How many times do you see it landing on yellow tails? I think I count six as well. Six. 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 Yes, ma'am. It's six. Can that simplify? Yes. Yes, it can simplify to three tenths. Okay. Is that all that could happen? No. no. Let's look at another blue probability. Tails. Blue tails. Let's look at blue, blue tails. tails. How many total times could it happen? Did they try? 20. How many blue tails? I count three as well. Can that simplify? No. No. What else could happen? Blue heads. We already did blue heads. No, we didn't. Blue tails, yeah. We know it's out of 20. How many blue and then heads? One, two, one, two, one, two, three. There's two. I got three. Two, three. It's three. Three. Okay, that's okay. What else could happen? Uh, red tails. Red tails. Okay, how many red tails? Yeah, I only counted two. Can that simplify? One tenth. Very good, one tenth. Um, any other possible? Yellow heads. Yellow heads. <coughs> it's out of 20. One tenth. Looking at yellow heads, how many do you see? I don't see any. What? I see one. I see two. 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 So it simplifies to what, Dylan? One ten. Good job. Anything else that could have happened? Yellow No. With that? Nothing else. Nothing else. We got a few. Okay, they want us to answer the question now. They want us to look at landing on a red, <coughs> then a tail. Did we do something looking at red tail? Yes, yes, we did. It's right here. So we're looking at that, and they want to know, is one-tenth greater than, less than, or equal to 50%? Less than. Less than. Okay, so we're going to say that this is less than... 50%. All right, B, this was the experimental data, right? Yep. Experimental yes, probability. B, we're going to look at the theoretical probability. Okay. To help us, let's create a tree diagram. What did we, what was the first event in our compound event that we did? What did, you had a spinner and you had a coin. What did we do first? Right. No, I, the spinner went first, right? You went, you did the spinner first. It was listed first. So I'm going to look at the spins. And looking back at my spinner, it could, how many different options did it have to land on? Three. Well, I mean, how many total spaces? Six. Six total spaces. I see three red, two yellow, and then a blue, right? I want to look at the three red spaces. Two yellow spaces, and then what was our last one? Blue. A blue. That's all the options of the spaces it could land on, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that was the first event of our compound event that occurred. Then we did coin. a coin, and we flipped it. 
What options could the coin have? So if I landed on the first red space, it could have had a heads or a tails. If I landed on the second red space, it could have flipped a heads or a tails. If I landed on the third, it could have landed on heads or tails. Well, if I landed on the first yellow space, I could have had a head or a tail. The second yellow space, you're going to have heads or tails. And then if I landed on the blue, we could have had heads or tails. So how many different possibilities or outcomes could have happened total? Six. Two, four, six, six, eight, six, ten, six, twelve. So how many different outcomes were there? Twelve. twelve different outcomes. There was no, we covered all possible outcomes of it happening. They want us to create a tree diagram, which we did, of the sample space. And what did they want us to look Multiply the probability and you spin them up by the probability. Oh, wow. yes, thank you. So now we need to find the probability of each. So what is one thing that could happen? We could land on a red heads. How many total possibilities did we say was there? Well, how many have a red and then a heads? Three. That simplifies to one fourth. one fourth. That's one thing that could happen. We could have landed on red tails. And that was out of 12 as well. How many different red uh, tails could we have? Three, which would be one fourth, one -fourth as well. What's something else that could have happened? Yellow heads. A yellow heads, I heard. That's out of 12. How many times could you a yellow and then a heads be landed? Two. Two, and that simplifies to one six. One six. What's something else that could happen? Yellow, Blue tails. yellow tails. How many options there? Two. Two which is also one six. Then what else could happen? Blue heads. Oops, I wrote a blue, blue heads out of 12. How many times could a blue heads occur? Once. Once. Then lastly, we have blue tails, which is out of 12. How many times could that occur? One. Okay. Any other possible outcomes? This was our theoretical data. Let's see how it looked to our experiment. Do we expect it to be exactly the same? No. But it should be similar or close. So looking at red heads, I got one fourth for the theoretical. Let's look at the experiment. Red heads, I got one fifth. Was it close? No. Was it exact? No. It, do you consider 20 trials a lot? No. Not when we're trying to get exactly theoretical data. So if I would have done 100 trials, it probably would have been closer to one fourth. Let's look at yellow tails. I got one six for theoretical. Yellow tails, I got three tenths. It's a little close. Is that exact? No. So that brings us to question C. How does experimental probability compare to theoretical probability? Well, we've already said which one is most accurate. Theoretical is most accurate. Experiment 
is not as accurate. So we're going to say they are different because 20 is a small amount of trials. If I conducted more experiments, it would be closer to the theoretical. Something along those lines. All right, so now I want you to take your process paper out and go to the back side, so just flip it over, and that should be problem 11 on guided practice on the back of the packet. So make sure you're looking at 11. And I'm going to work this problem with you. So you need to be writing it down. So is it still going to show up in your out of mind lesson? Yes, but you should get it right because you're going to have the answer already down. And there's going to be problems similar to this, but I wanted to teach you how it works because we didn't have a problem like this before. So we just looked at a jar, and then we picked up marbles, and they told us to put the marble back in the jar, right? before picking up another one. Well, if I picked up a marble and didn't put it back in the jar, how many marbles are in the jar? One less, which would be two in this case, right? We started with three. So if I left that yellow marble out and went to pick up another uh, marble, am I ever getting another, a yellow marble? I'm picking from two marbles now, and that changes dramatically. So that's an important statement. Like on number 11, it says we have a box of 24 yogurts. So I have a big box of 24 yogurts. Each box has four flavors with six of each flavor. Four times six gives us the 24. It says if you choose three yogurts without looking and don't replace them. So am I putting the yogurts back? No. no, I'm eating it and throwing away. So if I eat one yogurt, how many yogurts are in my container? 23. 23. And if I eat one strawberry yogurt, how many strawberry yogurts are gonna be left? If there's six of each, five, five left. Okay, so my data keeps changing because I'm eating them and they don't get back in my container. Okay, so we need to look at this. It says we're not replacing them and we need to find the probability. First, I find it easier to come up with four different flavors, they said. So, what's up, some flavors of some yogurt? Strawberry banana. All right, there's strawberry. So, we know there's six strawberry. What's another flavor? Chocolate. Peach. Blueberry. There's a chocolate one? <laughs> I guess we'll have a chocolate one. What's another one? Blueberry. Peach is one, I think. So that we could have six peach watermelon. and a blueberry. There is a blueberry. Yeah. Watermelon? Where are y'all getting y'all's yogurt? Uh, oh, gogurt watermelon. Okay. So I have six of each flavor, and that totals my 24, right? Agree? Four different flavors, six of each. All right, so I just opened the box and I'm gonna eat a yogurt. And I wanna pick three of the same. So I need to stick with one flavor. What flavor y'all wanna stick with? Strawberry. 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 I hear a lot of strawberry, we'll stick with strawberry. Okay, so the chances of me getting a strawberry is how many strawberries are there? Six. Six out of how many in the container? 24. 24. That's my chance of getting a strawberry the first time, which simplifies to one fourth. Okay. Now I go back to the box. I'm still hungry. I want to eat another strawberry, but I can't look inside the box. And I hope I get another strawberry. How many strawberries are left now? 
five strawberries are left, how many is in the container now? 23, because I ate one. Can that simplify to anything? No, we'll leave it as that. Okay, and I want to get one more strawberry. I can't look. How many strawberries are left now? Four. Four. And how many left in the container? 22. 22. Can that simplify? Mm -hmm. Two elevenths? So I need to know my the possibility of me randomly picking three strawberries in a row. Is that very likely, probably? Probably not. But the only way for me to figure this out would have been for me to make this huge tree diagram that would be like this whole wall and because there's a bunch and bunch of different options so do i want to draw a tree diagram that large to see how many times it could occur yeah. no so what you can do if you're not replacing them you can just multiply your three probabilities together and how did i know i needed three fractions because it says, what is the probability of getting three of the same? So I ate three. Okay, so I want to multiply these three probabilities together to see the possibility of me getting three in a row. So I want to multiply my denominators, four times 23 times 11. What two? Whoop, okay, that changes the game. <laughs> Uh, 4 times 23 times 11. 1,012. All right. 1,012. Then multiply my numerators. 1 times 5 is 5. 5, five times 2 ten. is ten. 10. So if I would have drawn this out, I would have had a tree diagram of 1,012 possibilities. That I, would you have wanted, wanted to draw that? No, I wouldn't. No, so, my chances of getting three strawberries randomly picked is 10 out of 1,012. Can I simplify that any? So, I want to simplify this fraction if I can. So, let they're both even. So, let's divide both by 2. What's 10 divided by 2? 5. Then half of 1,012, well, what's half of 1,000? 500. What is half of 12? So 506. Think that can simplify anymore? No. No. So hopefully I have that option. So the possibility of me randomly picking three strawberry yogurts in a row is what is the chances uh, five out of five hundred and six five out of five hundred and six so i hope you have all of uh-uh you best have all of that down it almost deserves an h try who else don't have all of it down there miss Matt? and that is it for our lesson. Um, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and peace out, llamas. Bye. Bye. Bye.